learning is indeed a lifelong voyage of discovery. And I hope that we're all inspired to continue learning and growing, challenging our brains, sharing what we know, teaching the science of wear. And perhaps no program exemplifies this more than the National 4-H GIS GPS Leadership Team, where applying the science of wear results directly in community action. And we have three outstanding young scientists all the way from Tennessee to show us the way. So please welcome Austin, Amanda, and Elizabeth. Go, well, guys. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Don. 4-H is a service learning organization represented nationally. Nothing better explains 4-H than our own pledge. We would like to share it with you today. I pledge my, my head, head to, to clearer, clearer thinking, thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, and my health to better living for my club, my community, my country, and my world. We're We're members of the National 4-H GIS GPS Leadership Team. Last year, our team was made up of 10 different youth from four states across the country. California, North Carolina, New York, and of course, Tennessee. Each year, our team attends the Ezra Users Conference. And last year, sitting around a table in the expo, our idea for our yearly project was born. But it wasn't anything fancy. We were just hanging out and brainstorming, and we asked ourselves, what are we passionate about? The group consensus was health. We chose to take on a national health project because of the significance it could have with America and 4-H. So one of the first steps in our process was interviewing local and national health professionals. And one of these interviews actually led us to discovering the data we'd be using in our map from countyhealthrankings.org. So once we found the data from countyhealthrankings.org, it was really just a lot of numbers. And we knew that we wanted to have obesity to be our main health factor and have four other health factors that related to obesity. The four factors that we decided upon were diabetes, food insecurity, children in poverty, and lack of exercise access. We began making the first draft of our poster map but then our geo mentor showed us many more ways that we could visualize the data in ArcGIS Pro and use it on a whole nother level. So instead of hearing us talk about it, we're going to show y'all. So what you see currently on the map is the spreadsheet data joined to counties with all of our health variables inside a layer. We are currently showing obesity rates with red showing high obesity rates and green showing lower obesity rates. Now, one of the tools that I really loved in ArcGIS Pro was some of the cool analysis tools. So I'm going to show you the hotspot analysis tool. So we're going to go to analysis, and we're going to go to tools. We're going to search for hotspot. Now, we're going to utilize the optimized hotspot analysis tool. Our input features is going to be our data layer, adult obesity. And we're going to analyze this by obesity. Then we're going to run this tool. So what this tool is going to show us is areas of hot spots or high obesity rates or areas of cold spots or low obesity rates. And this is really cool to visualize the data so we can start to see trends and patterns like down here in the southeast where you've got high obesity rates as a hot spot or in the west, cold spots of low obesity rates. Now a way to add on top of this layer is to add the outliers. So we're going to again go to analysis and tools we're going to search for outlier. Now, we're going to utilize the optimized outlier analysis tool. Again, we're going to utilize adult obesity as our layer. We're going to analyze by obesity. And we're going to run. Now, what this tool is going to show us is inside the hot spots, areas of outliers. So in a hot spot of high obesity, it'll find counties that's got low obesity rates or in a cold spot, areas that have high obesity rates with counties surrounding with low obesity rates. And here you see the blue dot showing the low obesity rates in the southeast with counties surrounding it with high obesity rates. Now, to see these two layers together, we're going to utilize the swipe tool. So we're going to go to appearance, and we're going to go to swipe. Now, this tool will let us drag across the data 
and see the hot spots with the outliers behind it and come inside of the hot spots. So before I get started, I'm going to clean up Austin's mess here. And one of the things that I really liked in ArcGIS Pro was all the charts that you can do. So you're going to select your health factor. I'm going to use adult obesity. Right click and go to create chart. And here you have bar chart, line chart, scatter plots, histograms, and box plots. And I'm going to use scatter plots. So for the x-axis number, I'm going to choose diabetes. And for the y-axis, obesity. And there's our scatter plot. Now, I wanted to do the scatter plots so that we could show the relationships between obesity and the four health factors. And the scatter plot right here shows the relationship between diabetes and obesity. Now, the colors on the chart match the counties on the map. So if you're looking at this and say, well, I want to see what my county or state ranks, then we can do something called a definition query. So you can go to data, hit definition query, and add a clause. Select state, and then I'm going to type in Tennessee, because that's where I'm from, and select add. And then you're going to press OK. And so I'm going to zoom in to Tennessee. And if I select this red dot right here, which is high in obesity, it's going to show me where that county is in Tennessee. And if I select this green dot, which is low in obesity, it's going to do the same thing. So to get out of the definition query, we're going to go back to data, definition query, and we're going to click the red at X and select OK. Then I'm going to clear everything off for Elizabeth. Thanks, Amanda. So one of my favorite tools was something called a grouping analysis. So we're going to go, we're going to zoom it back out first, and then we're going to do like Austin and go to analysis and hit tools. Except for this time, we're going to search for grouping. And we're going to run a grouping analysis. And the input feature I want to use is adult obesity, because that's my main factor. And then we had to create a unique ID field in order for the analysis to even run. You can have any number of classes, but for this purpose, I'm using three. And then we're going to pick the four factors we want to analyze against obesity. And then we're going to do no spatial constraints. And we're going to run the analysis. And what it's going to do is it's going to average the rates of the four factors, compare them to obesity, and divide them into classes, like so. So this is pretty simple to understand. But just to make it easier, we're going to do like Amanda did and create a chart, except for I'm going to do a box plot. And I'm going to hide these ribbons so we have some more room and add the four factors that I did when I was doing the analysis. And then we're going to split this group by the SS group, which was the analysis we just did. And as you can see, it gives us two options for box plots. This one is broken down by class, but I prefer to look at the mean lines. So what this shows is the gray line shows the range of values in our data set. And the gray box shows where 50% of the counties on the map fall. The lines correlate with the groups on the map where red is high in obesity and the four factors. So after analyzing these factors and looking at the various maps and plots, we noticed some strong correlations between these four factors and obesity. But it also raised a lot of questions. Why are certain areas of the map higher in obesity than others? Is it because of these four factors, or is there another driving force behind the American obesity epidemic? Honestly, guys, at this rate, we don't know yet. But as we move forward with this project, we hope to analyze more factors and look for ways to improve the health of our community. So now that we're all pros at ArcGIS Pro, I'm going to flip it back over to the desktop for Austin. To, so to t share the rest of our work with the other 4-Hers, we create a web app where you can truly find out how healthy your county is. Thank you to the National 4-H GIS leadership team and to our GEO mentors for all of your hard work and dedication. Also, a special thank you to Esri for making Art GIS Online and Pro available to all schools and clubs around the world. And thanks to you all for sharing this with the clubs and schools in your community and truly making a difference in our world. Thank, thank you. you. Great. That was amazing. Thank you. Thank you.
so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Really, really, really there you good. go, you thank guys. You. Good job. Amazing. Don, do you have any questions of these people? I'm just so inspired by these young people, and I wish they were in my introductory GIS class when I was at Oregon State. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they're right. just wonderful. Yeah. So, why are the red areas red? That's what, what we're looking into. Yes. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> More <laughs> research. Really? Yes. Yeah. Is it the food, or is it the the distance to the Mississippi River, or? Well, we think it's our southern cooking. That's yeah. what <laughs> our community is. <laughs> yes, I understand. That's good. What other thoughts do you have, Don? It sounds as though you had a lot of fun with the web app, making the web app. Any plans for continuing that? Well, we hope to add more factors from the countyhealthrankings.org website mm -hmm. into this, and where people can, you know, find more details about their county, just to raise awareness of. Mm -hmm how healthy their county is. Mm -hmm. That's good. Well, Don, what's going on in my brain is that picture that you had of spatial the, the sparks, you know, going off. sparks going off mm -hmm. and learning early what spatial thinking does, the power of the science of where inside your brain. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, really think, I really think a lot of you guys, you're just great. Thank Ladies thank and gentlemen, you. let's thank them one more time. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we want to invite two other people that are special out to the stage for just a moment. Charlie Fitzpatrick and a young woman called yep. Roxanne. There you go. You guys come out? Right close to right close to die. <laughs> now, some of you know that Charlie Fitzpatrick was really the the foundation, the founder of this whole school's program around the U.S. and now spreading all over the world. He has thousands of schools, hundreds of thousands of kids sort of in his uh, realm now. Isn't that amazing? I mean, he's pioneered this stuff forever. <laughs> and it's the realm of those guys, too. Huh? It's the realm of those folks out there. Yeah. But there's really, the, I, I think, the most exciting thing is seeing what happens when students get to see GIS in school and in clubs, what happens to them later. And there's no better example than Roxanna. Yeah. <laughs> Roxanne was on this stage. Let's see, where were you? I think you were over we're there. right there. Right over there, <laughs> four years ago. Yeah. She's from Roosevelt High School. Anybody here? From? Oh, yeah. There they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, she did exactly the same things that these students did. Well, I'm not going to talk anymore, <laughs> Roxanne. You talk. What yeah, so as Jack here? mentioned, I was here four years ago in that podium. Um, so now I'm a senior now in college, on my last year, where I'm double majoring in environmental science and urban studies. And just now, what I'm currently doing now is um, I still do GIS. So right now, I'm an intern at the Natural Capital Project at the University of Minnesota. So I'm basically following your steps, Jack. <laughs> Did you hear that, Tom Fisher? She's going to the University of Minnesota, Urban Design and Environmental Science. Yeah. This is great, Roxanne. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Roxanne and I went to the White House together. We met yeah. President Obama. I got to, I got to meet President Barack Obama, which is awesome. Pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, she's. I don't know what to say. She's a marvelous star. But she's, I would just say, a product of spatial learning, moving through her, her whole career and affecting her thinking. So it's that I, I have high expectations of you kids. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, Roxanne, for coming Thank back. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Thanks, Don. Right. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Jeff.